from Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hello there, I'm Graham, VK4BB, and this is the WIA National News for week commencing May 31. ICOM Australia have appointed Craig Norris as its technical engineering manager. Craig brings more than 25 years' experience to the role alongside a passion for amateur radio. AMSA issues float free EPIRB reminder. Float free EPIRBs will be required on certain types of commercial vessels from the 1st of January 2021, and operators are being urged to upgrade or purchase new units now to prevent a shortfall and meet their obligations in time. Australian Maritime Safety Authority Chair Stuart Ritchie said the cost of a float-free EPIRB pales in comparison to the cost of an unassisted incident at sea. A float-free EPIRB retails for about $800. The lives of your crew and passengers are worth more far than that, Stuart said. Radio amateur and friends still missing in Victoria. Radio amateur Russell Hill, 74, and a family friend, Carol Clay, 73, were last reported being seen March 20, and you heard that news here on VK1WIA National News, Sunday, April 26. That was when Victorian police asked your WIA for some help. Then almost a month later, May 23, the Sydney Morning Herald reported Carol and Russell Hill had not been seen since they embarked on a camping trip about 250 kilometres northeast of Melbourne, March 19. Mr Hill, an amateur radio enthusiast, contacted one of his friends on March 20, telling him he was setting up camp but couldn't talk long as it was getting a bit dark. May 25, Channel 7 TV News report. Scott McDonnell, an avid camper himself, claims he saw the pair camping at Pike's Flat about a month before they went missing. The 74 and 73-year-old went missing from the Wanangatta area March 20. Scott said the two friends introduced themselves to him after he set up camp next to them, adding he chatted to Hill but not so much to Clay. Russell had some wires strung up in the tree and we were asking him what it was. You are listening to the weekly amateur radio news service from VK1 WIA. However, in the Upper Spencer Gulf region of VK5, you may be watching a visual adaptation of the news at 7pm local via the VK5 RDC digital amateur television repeater. Or on the stream at batc.org.uk forward slash live forward slash vk5bd. This has been Bevan, Victor Kilo 5, Bravo Delta. This week in WIA National News, two directors join us, two of our newbies. Last week, we heard a lot about one of our new director's backgrounds and left Lee where he asked the big question. The big question, which I've been asked many, many times recently, why did I volunteer to be on the WIA board? Hi, I am Lee Moyle, VK3GK. I have been in the hobby for over 40 years now, both as a hobbyist and as a professional, and it has provided me with a great career, opportunities and even adventure, and it was time to give back. I have offered my services to WIA as I see an opportunity for the WIA to capitalise on some unique opportunities that have presented themselves recently. I bring strategic and objective thinking to the table, and I am involved with an external team of quality people that continually support the WIA. We have viable ideas that will raise the public profile of the WIA and should attract an increase in membership with long-term is a benefit to all. My activity levels within the amateur community put me in a position where I receive significant relevant information as it comes to hand and my international travel has enabled me to meet relevant people involved in amateur radio related regulatory and legislative discussions at a global level. I'm also active on social media where many of the newcomers to the hobby currently are at. My appointment to the WIA board will enable the other board members an extra hand to share the load and uh, somewhat, and uh, maybe with some external help as well to manage the never-ending tasks that continually seem to arise on a daily basis. I'm very active among the troops and in the field and as I attend most of the VK3 ham fests, often as a buyer but usually as a vendor, either selling or promoting VEA and AMC examinations as a pathway to USA and Australian amateur radio licensing. And now also as the local VK3 representative to directly interface with members and others as required to fly the WIA flag once again. And it has been missing in action in recent times. 
If positioned correctly, I can see we can get that physical presence back at many ham fests Australia-wide, promoting the benefits of the WIA membership and the WIA brand again. One needs to remember that a rising tide lifts all boats. And all the local and international lobbying that WIA does has a flow-on effect that benefits all the amateur radio community long-term. The WIA is the National Association for Amateur Radio in Australia. It is the only representative body that the IARU recognise in Australia. The WIA celebrated its 110th year in this year, in 2020. No other organisation can say that. Not the ARRL, nor the RSGB. It's an incredible effort and is important to continue on. We're all waiting for the allocation of VI110 WIA from ACMA to commemorate this event with the uh, on-air activations. The WIA is just not the board, as it is all of us. It includes all the volunteers and helpers. It includes all of the members. We are all the WIA and we all need to help each other and support each other. If you ever wanted to volunteer to help out, now is the time to put your hand up. Send an email, send an SMS or even a Facebook message letting us know what you can do to contribute. Every small contribution makes a difference. It really does. Your contribution will make a difference to the overall big picture as the organisation needs the support of the membership to bring benefits to all the members. Perception is reality and we need to fly the WIA banner once more and align ourselves with good strategic and corporate partners to build a strong and vibrant WIA for all of us for the, and for the future of amateur radio. Please remember that you are the WIA just as we are the WIA, and together as one, we can all continue to be that powerful, representative, one strong, loud voice of the WIA. Seven threes from Lee, and we'll see you on air. Hi, I'm Phil, VK2CPR, one of the new directors. This report outlines two things. The first, utilising the WIA email address for communications to membership, and the second, the ACMA 60 metre band p- proposal. The WIA member's email. Well, how does the WIA member's email work? The member's email is essentially your call with wia.org.au tacked onto it. The member's email address is essentially a relay to your personal email. So in this way, it enables the WIA to communicate with members. Anecdotal evidence suggests that the email has been underutilized in the past. In the grand amateur tradition, I'll be running an experiment. Uh, The experiment answers the question, who has an active WIA address? To answer this question, next week I'll be sending out WIA membership cards to these addresses. These PDF cards have your call, name, a member number and expiry date on them. The cards are generated by a Java application I wrote in lockdown. This is where I put my OCD to really good use. So how it works. Essentially, the application reads the WIA members list, manufactures a PDF on the fly for each member, and emails it out to your call at wia.org.au. It's a really big list, so I don't think I'll do the entire list in one hit. I guarantee if I do, my computer will probably have an apoplexy halfway through, so I'll be chunking it. The card prints out in credit card size. So go to the WIA webpage and activate your email. Amateurs on the members list who don't have a corresponding WIA email uh, will bounce back to us and this will give us an indication of uh, email population or email usage. So we'll go to the second point. Uh, The ACMA is asking for comments from amateur and commercial government users on the future amateur use of the 60 metre band. Basically the 60 metre band is only 15k wide and has four government commercial operators spread across it. It's important to note that the amateur radio operates as a secondary use service on a non-interference basis on this band. So our task is to operate in this band without causing interference to existing operators. So what are the options? Well, um, option one, this is a location restrictive option. That means that amateurs outside of VK4 may use the band. But if you're in VK4, then you're effectively excluded from the band. Uh, This is because the bulk of emergency stations are in VK4 in the top 1.5k of the band. This option has implications for other stations in states that border VK4. Uh, Option 2. Option 2 cuts off the top 1.5k of the band, that is the uh, 5365 to 5366.5 for amateur use because that's where the VK4 emergency stations are. 
so we all can use the rest of the band on a non-interference basis with the remaining three commercial users option three uh, option three is, is similar to option two uh, it's, it has a, a cut off 1.5k at the top and uh, it, but it also cuts off 5355 to 5358 which contains the New South Wales Ambulance the rest of the band is channelized into two blocks uh, the first block is 5351.5 to 5355.5 and the second block is 5358 to 5365 where we can all operate on a non-interference basis both option two and three contain whisper and jt frequencies so option four this is the no amateur access to the 60 meter band option which no doubt would be very popular with the uh, non-amateurs and commercial interests. Uh, so to summarise, the option two and three seem to be the most viable, with option two uh, most likely, in my opinion. Uh, a WIA poll uh, will be released soon to determine the most popular option. Uh, links are provided in the text of this report to uh, the ACMA site. So there you have it. Activate your WIA email and comment on the ACMA 60 meter band proposal. Until next time, this is Phil, VK2CPR73. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. On the national news, discussion point. Jeff Emery, VK4ZPP, and an important extract from this week's Q News. For VK4 listeners, Q News immediately follows this, the WIA national news across Australia. And for others, the link to VK4ZPP and Q News is in the text edition of today's WIA national news. Should I mention that the ACMA has a fact sheet on their website that spells out how things relating to the administration of amateur radio work. Perhaps I'll just leave it to you to follow up with the link in the text edition of the news. This document is a succinct explanation that should relieve the stress on some administrators of internet content, if only people will read it. For years I've seen posts asking why the WIA did not do things that were not its responsibility. Now that the assessment and licence allocation has been passed along to the Australian Maritime College, posts still appear complaining that the WIA does not have material on its website that is found on the AMC site. It was a condition of the transfer of these services that the WIA remove the material which related to exams. It has required still the questions and accusations get posted. I'm Jeff Emery, and that's what I think. How about you? International news with thanks to IARU, RSGB, SARL, Southgate Amateur Radio Club, ARRL, RAC, NZART, Amateur Radio Newsline, and the worldwide sources of the WIA. I'm Jason, VK2LAW. We begin this week's international news with news from the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, UNOOSA. They've announced the second edition of its Space for Youth competition for young people worldwide to share their ideas on space policy and exploration. The Space for Youth competition strives to show how young people can contribute to the achievement of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In order to participate, young people have to submit an essay on space as a tool to address climate challenges with examples from local communities. To India now, video messages transmitted via amateur radio slow scan TV have been able to reassure more than 70 families in West Bengal who'd lost contact with their relatives after Cyclone Amphan swept through the state. Amateurs such as Dibas Mandel, Victor Uniform 3 Zulu India India of the West Bengal Radio Club have visited families living on storm-wracked Sagar Island, Mosuni Island and elsewhere to take their pictures for later transmission. According to Club Secretary Ambarish Nagbiswas, Victor Uniform 2 Juliet Foxtrot Alpha, the Indian government gave the call sign Alpha Uniform 2 Alpha Charlie for storm-related operations, which he said facilitated communications with amateurs all over the world. 
And wrapping up this week's international news from South Africa, Amateur Radio Today is as relevant as it was 95 years ago. In a statement about the SARL 95th anniversary, their president, Nico van Rensburg, Zulu Sierra 6 Quebec Lima said, Amateur Radio has withstood the test of time because it's based on three major guiding principles. Communication between people, continuous technological development and self-education and training. Since the beginning of the amateur radio service at the dawn of the previous century, radio amateurs have made significant contributions to radio technology and the understanding of radio science. This work continues today as the primary purpose of the radio amateur service and its continuation and extension of the amateur's proven ability to contribute to the advancement of the radio art. For WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Ham Radio Operational News. It's Contact Sport. I'm Felix, VK4FUQ. May 3031, the CQ Worldwide WPX Contest for Amateurs Worldwide is on the air, everywhere. This weekend, whilst next weekend, it's the BK Shires. The weekend known as June 6 and 7. IARU HF World Championship, July 13, 14. Trans-Tasman Low Band Contest, next contest 17 July, and has the aim of encouraging low band activity between VK and ZL on the 160, 80 and 40 metre bands using SSB, CW, RITI or PSK. RD or Remembrance Day Contest will be August 15, 16. Oceania Contest, voice from 0800 hours UTC Saturday October the 3rd to 0800 hours UTC Sunday October the 4th. CW from 0800 hours UTC Saturday October the 10th to 0800 hours UTC Sunday October 11th. CQ Worldwide DX SSB October 24-25. CQ Worldwide DX CW November 28-29. December 6 to 8, 160 metres worldwide. December 14-15, 10 metres worldwide. Ted Palmoral DX Challenge. Four award periods, each of three months starting in January of each calendar year and two categories in the contest. Most Wanted and Top 5. Top 5 when you try and work the 5 Most Wanted DXCC entities. Most Wanted we work the Most Wanted DXCC entity. The DX entities in play are those Most Wanted during those three month windows. All major Australian contest rules and results are on the contest section of the WIA website. Italy now and some good DX in store for we stay at homers. It's 4U9 Stay Home, which is transmitting from the UN Global Service Centres and Manchester Radio Club till June 15. England, GB4 DLS until June 2, commemorates the 80th anniversary of the pivotal role played by the Dunkirk Little Ships during Operation Dynamo, May 26 to June 4, 1940. CW with some SSB, QSL via G4 YVM. First, British settlers in South Africa. The special event station ZS1820S celebrates the arrival of the first British settlers at the South African Cape 200 years ago, QRV throughout 2020, QSL via ZS2EC. India, special event, AT0II, II meaning improve immunity, from Lucknow, India, to spread the awareness of the COVID-19 pandemic situation. Activity will be through to August the 18th, QSL via VU2DCT. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FUQ in Ingham. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hello, I'm Bruce, vk 3 F from sunny Bendigo. Worldwide Special Interest Group News, Final Frontier. Aris completes second test of the new style radio contact called multi-point telebridge contact via amateur radio. The concept was developed for distance learning when schools closed worldwide due to COVID-19. The virus eliminated all opportunities for ARIS radio contacts at education organisations. The radio contact was completed on May 15th with ISS Commander Chris Cassidy, KF5 KDR. A new ARIS telebridge ground station was operated by John Saigo, ZF. S6JON, Johannesburg, South Africa. The telebridge linked to the astronaut and each youth dialed in from home via phone.
Each student took a turn asking their question of the astronaut. Their families, faculty, and the public could also listen from their homes. The youth taking part in Aris's second test belonged to the Airdrie Space Science Club in Canada. Sunday, May fourth, twenty twenty, AO seven. A forty-year-old satellite produces a stunning contact. Diego LW two DAF in Buenos Aires and Tom ZS one TA in Cape Town. The contact scanned a distance of six thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven kilometers across the South Atlantic, with both stations aiming only two to three degrees on the horizon. Worldwide special interest groups FT four and FT eight. FT eight used for ham radio moon bounce contact. What is possibly the first FT eight contact via moon bounce has taken place between Paul W two H R O and Peter P A two V. Paul and Peter used W S J T X two point. Two point zero RC one, which is a beta release candidate for version two point two of the program WSJTX. Both stations have moderate four Yagi setups on four thirty two. Conditions were not particularly good. Degradation around three dB and the sun only twenty degrees from the moon. Worldwide special interest groups, radio amateur old timers. Clive VK six CSW joins us now to remind that the Radio Amateurs Old Timers Club of Australia's June Bulletin goes to air tomorrow, Monday, June first. What's in store, Clive? This month, as well as all the latest club news, we tell you about the Heath Kit that flew, part two of the Titanic radio operator's story, and the attempt to retrieve their radio equipment and an item on power windows. Time does not permit me to list all the broadcast times and frequencies throughout Australia, but as well as the regular FM and HF broadcasts tomorrow, we now have new transmissions on digital mobile radio and on D-Star. Full details can be found on the RAOTC website www.raotc.com dot org dot au and click on broadcasts because of these changes i would urge all listeners to visit the raotc website and check the latest information for your area everyone's most welcome to tune in tomorrow and to join in the callbacks afterwards if none of the broadcast times suit you you can download the current audio file from the raotc website as at any time as from today and you can also download files for the previous five months. If you do listen via the internet, would you please email your comments to us? Once again, check the RAOTC website for your local transmission schedule, tune in tomorrow or download the file for the June Bulletin, and we look forward to hearing your call sign in the callbacks afterwards. Stay safe, and 7-3 from Clive, VK6CSW. Thanks, old timer. Hi, hi. Now to our future and youngsters on the air or Yota. Ham Radio Yota Online. The youth working group up in IARU Region 1 has created a newly developed program called Youngsters on the Air Yota Online. In these monthly gatherings, they will try to bring the Yota feeling towards the online community and spread the word that there is youth in ham radio. A Yota team consisting of active youngsters will present different topics. While answering questions from the community, there will be a part where different recent Yota events will be described and participant stories will be shared, followed by a Q&A session with the presenters. At the end of the event, a prize raffle amongst all participants. The first one-hour meeting took place Thursday at 1800 UTC as a live stream. They will share the link to the server for their next gathering one day prior to the event on the Ham Yota homepage and social media channels. The event will also be live streamed to the 
Ham Yota YouTube channel and will be recorded to be available online at any time. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Rescue Radio. Raynet helps elderly man. During a routine 80 metre net, an amateur in the southwest of the UK remarked that he was elderly, without family to help him, and was virtually out of food. The nearest Raynet group, local to the gentleman concerned, were asked to see if anything could be done to help. The local coronavirus support network were alerted and delivered a food package that afternoon. Additionally, the local town council contacted the gentleman and organised a support package for him, as it transpired he is also disabled. Special Interest Group's SDR Pete ZL1PWM, Bay of Islands, New Zealand, has something for us, he says. Kiwi SDR HF receiving station on SDR is located in the Bay of Islands and is configured for two users with full spectrum display, then six users with audio only. And the antenna is a northeast facing delta terminated loop. Special interest groups, summits on the air. The SOTA group in Switzerland, HB9 SOTA, celebrates its 15th anniversary with special event call sign HB15 SOTA for 12 whole months, ending May 9th, 2021. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F. Rewind. I'm John Knox, VK4 FJRK. A US federal judge in Virginia has given permission to retrieve the ill-fated RMS Titanic's Marconi wireless gear, which transmitted distress calls from the sinking ocean liner during its maiden voyage. Judge Rebecca Beach Smith of the US District Court in Norfolk ruled that the radio gear is historically and culturally important and could soon be lost within the rapidly decaying wreck. One would have thought that it had been long since lost. The Titanic, as we know, sank after striking an iceberg some 370 miles off the coast of Newfoundland in 1912. Judge Smith wrote in her ruling that the Marconi device has significant historical, educational, scientific and cultural value as it was used to make distress calls while the Titanic was going down. She said the company would be permitted minimally to cut into the wreck to access the radio room. David Concannon, a lawyer for RMS Titanic Incorporated, which the court has recognised as the steward of the vessel's artefacts, says the company would try to avoid cutting into the ship, noting that the radio room may be reachable via a skylight that was already open. More legal wrangling may lie ahead. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration contends that the retrieval expedition is still prohibited under US law and under an international agreement between the United States and the United Kingdom. RMS Titanic Incorporated has said that the radio transmitter could unlock some of the secrets about a missed warning message and distress calls sent from the ship. How, I have no idea. Con Cannon said it tells an important story of the heroism of the operators that saved the lives of 705 people. They worked until water was lapping at their feet. For VK1 WIA and Rewind, I'm John Knox, VK4 FJRK. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions www.wia.org.au Well, there we be, the end of WIA and the national news for another week. I'm Graham VK4BB. On the social scene, November, we're looking at the biennial ham fest in VK7, the Rockhampton Amateur Radio Club's annual dinner, the Tark Christmas party, and also the Tark Christmas Lights Tour. All up and coming in November 2020. I'm Graham VK4BB. What softly? From Australia, this has been VK1 WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service. On RF, we thank our rebroadcast team and you for listening. And remember, internet streaming and text of this news is available 24-7 at wia.org.au.